All right, so we're gonna look at area between the curves. Obviously, we did this a little bit all the way. Um, given by how the videos have gone, I'm gonna guess that some of us are seeing this for maybe the first or second time. Maybe we've never seen this before. Uh, what we're trying to do is determine the area between two, like that, okay. between two curves. So in our example, our curves look something like this, and we want to determine this area here. Happy with that? To do that, we need to follow a pretty simple sort of process, I guess. It gets a little bit messy, but it's a relatively simple process. Find the intersection points, which are these points here and here. Set up an integration where the bounds, A and B, are simply the X values of our intersection points. So we're just saying we want to determine this area here. Why does this make sense? Which one is FX here? In this example, it's actually the bottom one. Let's go with the top one. Let's go with the top one for now because it makes more sense to my similarities. Let's say that's FX, and which one is my GX? The bottom one, correct? What I'm saying is I want, I want a different colour pen, but I haven't got one. That's a blue pen. Here we are, orange and red, real beauty. What I'm saying is I want the red area from here to here. That's what Fx is, correct? That's the area of Fx in those points. So that's what the integration will give us. And I want to take away this area here. What will that leave you with? Only the orange area, which is this part here, correct? <coughs> which is what we're looking for. So we're taking the top function away from the bottom function. But you'll notice that in my function, I haven't said top function minus bottom function. What have I said? Fx minus gx. Have I stressed that it has to be the top function or not? How have I got around the fact that I could be dealing with the top function or the bottom function? What have I done? Absolutely. I've added the absolute values. Then you won't find that in your textbook. So you've got two choices here. You can either find out which function's on top, which function's on bottom, and do it that way, or you can just take the absolute. Let's say this area is 10 and this area is 20. Let's just say hypothetically. 20 minus 10 is 10. What's 10 minus 20? What's the absolute of negative 10? Does it matter which way I go? So if I add these absolute signs in, I don't need to worry about which function is on top. If you don't, it very much matters. Cool? So all these absolutes are saying is I just want the positive area between those two curves. From there, I simplify, integrate, and solve. So I've given us our example here. fx equals x squared gx equals x squared, uh, negative x squared plus a. If I was doing this and I had heaps of time in an example, it would be always something I'd recommend you do. Tech active example, what I always do? Plot up my graph, correct? Then I could do the next two points really simply. How could I do the, fir the uh, first point with my calculator? Can I do that with my calculator, find the intercepts? Yep, shift, G, soft, intercepts. Boom, boom, straight up. Can I do this with my calculator? Yes. I would write this down regardless of whether it was tech free or tech active, but I can solve my integration with my calculator. Does that make sense? Shift, G, solve, arrow, little squiggly, between the functions. Cool. Tech active, tech free exam though, I don't have that choice. So how do I find my intercepts in a tech free exam? I want to find the point where <coughs> fx equals gx, correct? 
What I'm really saying is the y values are the same and the x values are the same. If I look at that point, are the x values the same for both functions? Are the y values the same for both functions? It's the same for both of those, cool. So I set this up as an equation and I solve for my unknown. So I save my values, x squared, negative x squared plus eight. What would I do then? Take everything to one side. Which side would I take it to the left hand side or the right hand side? Left hand side just because it's easier. So I'm going to plus x squared minus eight. Plus x squared minus eight. What does that leave me with? Oh, I wouldn't have done that actually. Just the plus x squared is fine. Confused to factorize it. Two x squared equals. I didn't take the eight. Two x squared equals. Eight. What do I do now? Divide by two. Reverse bombas. X squared equals four. How do I get rid of the squared? What do I have to remember? Plus or minus. Plus or minus because the square root involves both a positive and a negative solution. That equals plus or minus two. Correct. That makes sense. If we look back at our graph, there should be how many intersection points? Two. That makes sense. We should have two, not one. Sweet. So what does that tell me? I've got this wonderful thing. I know the intersect. What do I need to do with that value? Yes. What is that value for? What are those values for? They tell me the boundaries for my integration, my A and my B value. So when I'm setting this up, which one goes at the bottom, which one goes at the top? Two goes on the top and negative two on the bottom. What do I do now? Integrate. Oh, no, I don't do that yet. Before I integrate. I add those two together, which gives me, so I should expand the negative into both terms, correct? And I'm left with 2x squared minus 8 dx. Now I integrate. And because I've been away a little bit, someone asked me, why do I do square brackets? What's that line telling me? It wasn't in this class, it was in the class, but probably good to address it. What's that? What's this telling me? This, when I say this line, I mean, what is this line of working telling me? What does that mean? Have I integrated my function yet? I'd argue I have integrated my function. So I've got rid of this. The moment I get rid of this, what am I saying? Yeah, because this is saying I need to integrate still. Because that sign's missing, I'm saying I have integrated. What do I now need to do? Sub in my values, correct? Sub in my boundaries. Which one goes first? The far, the big boundary or the little boundary? Big boundary. So I've got area equals the absolute of 2, 2 cubed, minus 3, should put those in some other brackets, 8, 2, plus C, minus 2, negative 2 to the power 3, over 3, minus 8, negative 2, plus C. What happens to the C's? Cancel out. And I forgot my bar. Two to the power three times two over three. Sixteen over three minus sixteen minus negative sixteen over three plus sixteen.
feel like I might have moved with you. Oh, no, I haven't. No. What do I do with that? Tech, tech free exam, what do I do with that? I'll leave it. Nope. Use your brain. Nope. Don't have those. Two options. I can set this up as a mixed fraction or I can do what? Can I put 16 over as a something over 3? What would that become? So it's 16 over 3 minus 6 times 3. Very good, 48 over 3. What's that going to give me? Negative 32 on 3 minus 32 on 3. The absolute value of negative 64 on 3. 21 and a third, if you want. Once we take the absolute, the area is 21 and a third. Yep, we just make it positive. 21 and a third what? Unit squared. Unit squared. Yep, squared, unit squared, I don't care. Yep. Does that make sense? What's different about it? Step one. Everything else is exactly the same, correct? The only thing that's different is we have to find our intercepts first. Cool? Awesome. I'll let you guys get going on some work.